For the first time here on the channel, we're going to be exploring the Freemasons. Hey guys, welcome back to Fifty Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton. This is a channel where we share facts and information about the different countries, cultures, religion, and people of our world. Now, there's a whole lot of speculation about the Freemasons, so hopefully this video clears up some of those, as well as hopefully it answers questions about them that you might have. So let's get into this episode. We have 10 facts to go through, starting with fact number 10. Who are the Freemasons or what are Freemasons anyways? Well, Freemasons are a fraternal organization and pretty much what that means is that only men can be admitted as a member. We can also trace the origins of the Freemasons back to the Middle Ages in Europe where they functioned as a guild of skilled stonemasons, hence the name Freemasons. Now the next thing to know about Freemasons at fact number nine is that the first Grand Lodge which was established to govern Freemasonry in England and Wales, it was formed in the year 1717 and this was during a meeting at a pub in the city of London called the Goose and Gridiron. Now at that time there were four lodges in the city but in Scotland a Masonic Lodge in Edinburgh has records to show that it has been in existence since at least 1599. Now, during the early 18th century, Freemasonry spread quickly to Europe and the colonies of Europe. Fact number eight is something that a lot of people that aren't even Freemasons, they know about this. So symbols. Symbols are commonly used and they're seen associated with Freemasons and they're considered to be arcane secrets by many, but they actually are not really that secretive? Well, I'll explain what I mean. So the most popular amongst them is the all-seeing eye, and this is a very old symbol that's used to represent all-knowing quality of God, and it was not designed by Freemasons. So this existed way before Freemasons. It wasn't something that they invented, they just adopted it. Also, the square and the compass. This also wasn't something that was invented by the Freemasons, but it represents the art of building and architecture, and the G in the middle of it has a degree of ambiguity that surrounds it, so we're not necessarily 100% clear on what that actually means, but it either represents God or it represents a geometric equilibrium that the entire universe was designed on. And you know, amongst those theories, there's other speculations about it. But there's another symbol of Freemasons that actually takes inspiration from the world of the beehive, as a matter of fact. Masons were originally working men who were supposed to be as busy as bees. We've heard that expression before. And the beehive symbolizes the industriousness of the Freemason Lodge. They're always busy, always active, always up to something. For fact number seven, the Freemasons use a variety of handshakes in order to greet one another. These handshakes are based on a Mason's rank within the organization though. And it's interesting, I have seen actual Freemasons do the handshake in public. I guess they didn't know I was looking, but I saw what they were doing. Either way though, when it comes to handshakes, there are handshakes for each degree. So there's the apprentice, the fellow craft and the master. Each rite has its own handshake, so there is a, quite a variety of them. They're used during Masonic ceremonies and as well as I guess that they're used in public because I literally saw them doing one of the handshakes. I knew it, I'm like that's those are Freemasons right there. Moving on to fact number six. Now there is a code of ethics that guides the behavior of Freemasons. This code is taken from several documents and the most famous of these documents are actually known as the Old Charges or the Constitutions. One of these documents, by the way, known as the Regis Poem or the Hollowell Manuscript, it actually dates back to sometime around the later part of the 14th century to the early 15th century, somewhere in between there. And it's reportedly the oldest document to mention Masonry. And this is according to Petrie Stone Review of Freemasonry. And that's, by the way, is an online magazine that is written by the Freemasons. 
makes sense. Guys, since we are halfway in this episode, we like to explore the different religions, cultures, and sometimes you look at organizations like this and people from all around our world. We do have a playlist though that has more videos like this where you can learn about different religions, cultures, and, and groups of people. I'll link to it below in the video description section. So if you're enjoying this one so far, I definitely know you're gonna like at least one of those videos. So enjoy, you can watch one of those videos right after you watch this one though. We got five more facts to look at when it comes to Freemasons. Continuing with fact number five, initiation for new members requires a long period of training and during this time, they learn the craft and often are taught advanced math and architecture, among other skills. Now, their skills are in such a high demand that experienced Freemasons were frequently sought out by monarchs or high-ranking church officials. Now, the guilds, they provide members not only with wage protection and quality control over the work that's performed, but also important social connections. That's definitely one of the benefits of being in an organization like Freemasons. You know, you're very, very, very connected. But among other things, members of Freemasonry, they gather in lodges and Freemasons, you know, they socialize, they eat meals together, they gather to discuss events and things like that. Now, I kind of alluded to this next fact, but the early Masonic lodges were exclusively male, meaning that women were completely prohibited from being a member. But over time, as the years went on, women continued to play a very crucial role in the organization, especially in Europe. And the Masonic organizations, they were formed later on in a way that would admit both male and female members. Now, some of these organizations include the Order of the Amaranth. Also, there's the Order of the White Shrine of Jerusalem and the Order of the Eastern Star. In these organizations, both men and women partake in Masonic rites and women can hold positions of authority and leadership. There are some divisions though where it's just exclusively female and some just exclusively male. Although we do have some organizations in Freemasonry that mix. Coming down near to the end of this episode, so fact number three, the Catholic Church, they first condemned Freemasonry in the year 1738. And this was prompted by a concern over Masonic temples and secret rituals that were performed inside of them. In the 19th century, the Vatican even called the Masons the Synagogue of Satan. This is a quote taken from the last book of the Bible, Revelation. Either way though, the church went on even further in the year 1983, declaring that their principles have always been considered irreconcilable with the doctrine of the church and therefore membership in them remains forbidden. The faithful who enroll in Masonic associations are in a state of grave sin and may not receive Holy Communion. This is what the church had to say about those who joined Freemasonry. Moving on now to fact number two. Numbers are also very symbolic in Freemasonry. The number three, the number five, and the number seven have very great importance to Freemasons. The number three is another way to express the sacred idea of the triangle or the trinity, the triforce. You know, there's so many different terms to describe three. So with that said, yes, the number three is another symbol for the deity to Freemasons anyways. Now, the number five is representative of the five human senses, the five points of fellowship, and the five-pointed star, and also geometry, which is called the fifth science. Now, Pythagoreans, they consider the number five a mystical number because it is the union of the first even number and the first odd number, symbolizing mixed conditions of order and disorder, happiness and misfortune, as well as life and death. Now, the last fact I want to end off with is actually taking a look at some Masons. Who are some people among us that have lived on this planet that were part of the Freemasons? Well, some famous Freemasons can be found throughout history, as a matter of fact, like George Washington was a master Mason. There's also Benjamin Franklin, and he was a founding member of the first Masonic Lodge in America. Also, President Franklin D. Roosevelt and Gerald Ford were Masons. And then there was Prime Minister of Great Britain, Winston Churchill. Also, the famous composer Mozart was a Mason. Then there is Steve Wozniak, who is the co-founder of Apple. Also, Henry Ford, you know, his name lives on with the Ford cars. He was a Mason. 
John Wayne, as well as astronaut Buzz Aldrin are also Masons. And guys, that is not an exhaustive list. This is just all I wanted to list in the episode, but there's many, many, many more that I could list. Either way, guys, that ends this episode on 10 surprising facts about Freemasons. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and maybe learned something new. If you wanna see more videos like this, leave your suggestions down below. Also subscribe if this is your first time here to be notified every time we post a new video. Thanks for joining with me on FTD Facts and hopefully you continue with us as we learn about the different countries, cultures, religions, and people of our world. Until next time, stay awesome, stay educated. See you soon. Later.